Okay, so this is the overview of the Charrier experiment. There's the draft tube set up there with the test article hanging at the 30 centimeter height. You can see the fine suspension wires. This up at the top here is the um, MOSFET relay. So we're driving the MOSFET that you see there. With the signal from the signal generator, uh, and it's the MOSFET is switching a 24 volt battery supply from those batteries down there. Uh, and we'll be going through this DC ammeter, and um, right there is the uh, 0.56 ohm current viewing resistor, and I have it connected with uh, the, uh, almost a Kelvin probe arrangement, very non-inductive. There's the F43 function generator, and there's the oscilloscope, and um, like that. That's the overall arrangement of the experiment. I'm going to put the camera on the tripod now, and when the test article has stopped uh, vibrating, we will begin. Here's the test article hanging in its draft tube. Uh, as you can see, the center of mass is 30 centimeters below the suspension point up above. And uh, right now, it's just uh, settling. It's not being powered or driven or anything. It's just settling after experiencing some vibration as I was setting the experiment up. So I think you can see that uh, we have uh, a pendulum that's not uh, not not damped very well, uh, and in fact, it may be coupling vibrations from the environment into its uh, pendular motion. Right now, it's uh, moving in the vertical pendulum mode, uh, but when I begin stimulating it, it'll start um, rotating in the torsional pendulum mode. Okay, so um, I'm just going to let it settle until it's motionless, and then we will start the experiment. All right, after 10 minutes or so of settling time, the thing is almost motionless. Almost. Still moving about a millimeter, half a millimeter or so. And the uh, axis of the test article is uh, horizontal, and it's pointing east-west, uh, with west to the left. Okay. And that's uh, magnetic. That's with reference to the magnetic north. So we're east, or I'm sorry, west to, to the left and east to the right. I'm on the southeast side <laughs> of the um, test article. Okay, now I'm going to turn on the drive to the coil. There's a green LED mounted on the coil, so you'll be able to see uh, the timing of the pulsations to the coil. Uh, okay, so here we go. Okay, so the period of this pulsation is about, uh, it, well, it's 13.04, 1, 1 1.304 seconds. I've found that the uh, uh, resonant frequency of the torsional pendulum is, around, is somewhere between 1250 and 1300 milliseconds about. Here you can see the rotation slowing down, 
I've made no changes to anything. And now it's the rotation is speeding up again. So that's actually what you would call a beat. Um, because the stimulation frequency is just a little bit off of the true resonant frequency of the test article. So you see the amplitude of the swing increasing and then decreasing and then increasing again. Let me slow the thing down just a little bit here. Uh, I'm sorry, speed it up a little bit so that the period uh, goes to uh, about 1250. So now the period is 1250 milliseconds, and I think you can see that uh, we have even more of a torsional oscillation now, and it's uh, not really doing that slow down, speed up thing anymore, which means I'm stimulating it much more closely to the actual resonant frequency uh, or the period of the pendulum. Looks like it's, yeah, it's coming out of sync now. So I'm still not quite on the true oscillation frequency of the pendulum. It stopped. Now it should start increasing again. So once again we have a little bit of a beat going on there where the frequency of the drive is not quite the exact frequency of the oscillation. So let me go to about 12.75. Okay, that's 12.80, uh, 1280 milliseconds. Okay, so this is a positive going square pulse, 50-50 mark space ratio uh, from a 24 volt supply and the peak currents during the on time uh, are about 1.7 to 1.8 amps. That looks pretty good there. It doesn't really look like it's doing any much of a speed up or slow down. I think the... Well, did I speak too soon? Yeah, it's losing a little bit of amplitude there. So once again, I'm not quite on the exact right frequency, but I'm pretty darn close to it at 1280 milliseconds for the period. So let's go a little bit... Uh, it's very, very sensitive on the function generator. Okay, that's 1300 milliseconds right there. 1301. That's looking pretty good. 1301 milliseconds. All right, now I'm going to turn the amplitude back down. So now there's no drive, and we're just seeing the thing. Uh, swinging down, being damped by air friction and the restoring force of the torsion in the pendulum itself. And it's going to take it uh, ten, another 10 minutes to swing back down to uh, motionlessness, at which point I will uh, start another test with the
recoil oriented north south. Stand by. There will be more. Okay, now I've got the axis of the device oriented uh, north-south, magnetic north-south, and it's uh, settled down, and what I'm going to do now is apply the same stimulation as before uh, at a period of 1301 milliseconds, just like before. So there we go. Oh, sorry. Uh, I guess I have to plug the power in first. Okay. okay, now I think we're ready. Here we go. Now I would have thought that if it was interacting with the magnetic field of the Earth that it would not rotate quite so well in this orientation. And it is rotating a little bit less than it was when it was east-west, I think. And it looks like the period may have changed a little bit too. Let me shorten the period a little bit. It's 1280, 1280 milliseconds now. Quite a bit of rotation there. Um, okay, let me see if I can try another angle. Stand by. Okay, in the previous test I had the coil oriented towards what I know is uh, magnetic north from a reading taken outside. Uh, but I realize now that the local environment might be causing a slightly different direction. So I took a, a magnetic compass and I held it close to where the coil is positioned. And I determined that, sure enough, there is a bit of uh, difference in the direction that the compass points right here than there is out uh, in the yard. So now I've got the coil oriented in the same direction that the compass points at this location. So hopefully that will compensate for the presence of uh, the big lumps of steel that I have not very far away. We're only about a little bit over a meter away from um, a big metal toolbox on the left side of the apparatus. There's a drill press over there too. So maybe we've compensated for that, maybe not. All right, so um, I'm going to turn on the stimulation at uh, 1280, uh, 1280 milliseconds period now. OK, 
Okay, we're still getting the same peak currents that we had that we had before, but I guess you can see that the amplitude of the oscillation is much decreased now. By this time in the other orientations we were really swinging. And now the stimulation is going off. Um, okay, well that's very interesting. So, um, looks like we were in fact responding to the direction of the local field. When we are parallel to it, we don't get much rotation, but when we're orthogonal to the local field, I guess you would call it, we get a lot of uh, a lot of rotation. So I think that uh, uh, anyone who is testing a device like this needs to um, test it in various orientations with respect to items in the laboratory and also with respect to the Earth's field so that um, you can be sure that you're not simply responding to the local environment rather than generating some kind of unidirectional thrust. Um, at this point, the artifacts caused by the responses we're seeing here are so large compared to um, the reported magnitude of thrusts that it's almost impossible to see how one would um, filter the signal and uh, see only the thrusts that are generated, if there are any. Thank you for watching.